Of the four children which Louis XVI of France and his infamous wife, Marie Antoinette had, only one survived into adulthood and lived a long life. This was their first child and daughter, Marie-Thérèse Charlotte. Held prisoner in France during the French Revolution, she later ended up in exile in Austria, before returning to her homeland in the 1810s. Having married back into the French royal family, she had the curious distinction of being the Queen of France for just 20 minutes in 1830, but her later life was spent yet again in exile. This is her story. While it is well known that King Louis XVI and his wife, Queen Marie Antoinette, were deposed and executed in the early 1790s as part of the French Revolution, what is often less noted is the residual role which the House of Bourbon, the French royal family from which Louis hailed, continued to play in French politics during the 19th century. Indeed, one of Louis and Marie's children even went on to briefly become the Queen of France herself in 1830. Marie-Thérèse Charlotte was the eldest of Louis and Marie's children. She was born on the 19th of December 1778 at the Royal Palace of Versailles outside Paris. She acquired three siblings in the years that followed, yet each would live tragically short lives. Louis Joseph was born in 1781, but died of tuberculosis in 1789 when he was just seven years old. The same disease had already killed Marie's only sister, Sophie Helena, in 1787, when she was just shy of her first birthday. The final sibling, Louis Charles, was born in 1785, and as we will see, was to play a role in the tumultuous events which led from the French Revolution of 1789. Marie's childhood was spent surrounded by the pageantry and formality of the royal court at Versailles. She was reared by a series of governesses, which included her mother's closest confidant, Yolande de Polastron, Duchess of Polignac. Contrary to popular perceptions, her mother, Marie Antoinette, was not some air-headed spendthrift who was indifferent to the well-being of France's citizens, but attempted to encourage in her daughter the virtues of charity. Nevertheless, trouble was brewing throughout France, and in particular, amongst the swelling population of Paris. A series of harvest failures and economic crisis throughout the country in the 1780s had destabilised France considerably, and it would soon all boil over. In 1789, in an effort to allay the financial crisis, Louis XVI agreed to convene a meeting of the Estates General, the French Parliament. This had not met in over a century and a half, but was now needed in order to vote a large financial payment to the monarch, with which the imminent economic collapse of the French state could be averted. Louis, for his part, believed he could grant some small concessions to the Parliament, following which he would disband it and returned to ruling autocratically from Versailles. He was profoundly mistaken in this assumption. In the summer of 1789, after the estates met for the first time, the king and his ministers quickly lost control of the situation. The parliament soon began assuming political power into its own hands and moved the seat of government back to Paris itself. The storming of the Bastille prison in the city on the 14th of July 1789, by a Parisian mob, was a climactic moment in the French Revolution, indicating the extent to which Louis had become marginalised in the governance of his own country. Members of the royal court now began to flee from France. Then, in early October, a large band of Parisian citizens showed up at Versailles and forced the king and queen and their two living children to relocate to Paris. They would spend the next year and a half residing at the Tuileries Palace in the French capital, before an ill-judged attempt to flee from France in June 1791 was botched, leading to a souring of relations between the King and Queen and the revolutionary government. Eventually, in August 1792, Louis was opposed, 
following which he was put on trial and executed by guillotine on the 21st of January 1793. Marie's mother soon met with a similar fate in October 1793. Thus, by the end of 1793, Marie Therese was effectively an orphan, under arrest in Paris by a hostile revolutionary government. Both her and her younger brother, Louis Charles, remained under arrest in separate locations. Eventually, Louis died on the 8th of June 1795. This, as with his and Marie's deceased brother and sister, was also almost certainly owing to tuberculosis, but an autopsy conducted in the days after his death revealed signs of physical injuries, and the boy, just 10 years old when he died, had evidently been mistreated in captivity. Louis Charles passed away just as the most violent and extreme period of the French Revolution was coming to an end. A more sanguine administration eventually granted Marie Therese permission to leave France in December 1795, right before her 17th birthday. She would now head for Vienna to live in exile at the court of her Austrian cousins, while her mother, Marie Antoinette, had been born into the Austrian royal family of the Habsburgs. Marie arrived in Vienna in the first days of 1796. She was the only member of the Bourbon royal family to survive a prolonged period of arrest by the French revolutionary government in the first half of the 1790s. Shortly afterwards, she was relocated to Courland in modern day Latvia, where her uncle, Louis XVI's brother, Louis Stanislas, had taken up residence, proclaiming himself as King Louis XVIII of France. The self-proclaimed king wished for Marie to marry Louis Antoine, the son of Charles Philippe, another of Louis XVI's brothers. Despite them being first cousins, Marie agreed to the union and the couple were married on the 10th of June 1799 at the Jelgava Palace in Latvia. Marie and Louis Antoine subsequently relocated to Britain. Here, they could well have lived a long life in comfortable exile, but eventually, events back home in France were to radically change the course of Marie's life yet again. In the late 1790s, the French Republic had gradually mutated into a military dictatorship, headed by General Napoleon Bonaparte. Eventually, in 1803, this Corsican military commander proclaimed himself Emperor of France. Years of war followed, during which Napoleon first conquered most of Europe, and then lost it all, having made the mistake of trying to invade Russia. When he was forced to abdicate for the first time in 1814, it was the signal for the Bourbons to return to their homeland. Marie's uncle, Louis XVIII, now resumed the monarchy of France, and despite a brief return to power by Napoleon in 1815, the Bourbon restoration would prove enduring. He would rule the country of his ancestors until 1824. When Louis XVIII died on the 16th of September 1824, he was succeeded by his brother Charles Philippe, who would become King Charles X of France. As a brother of Louis XVI, the new monarch was simultaneously Marie's uncle and her father-in-law. His eldest son was Marie's husband, Louis Antoine. As such, 30 years after her parents had been executed at the height of the French Revolution, Marie now found herself married to the heir apparent to the French throne. The new monarch Charles X was deeply unpopular in the second half of the 1820s. A staunch royalist, he alienated a broad cross-section of French society through his efforts to re-establish a strong French aristocracy and his support for the Roman Catholic Church, all measures which reminded the French people too much of the absolutist rule of his older brother in the 20 years or so prior to the revolution of 1789. Charles fought back against his opposition, initiating a colonial war in Algeria in order to build support for his rule at home. But eventually, 
he went too far in his absolutist tendencies. The spark which led to his deposition was due to the issuing of a series of laws in July 1830. The July Ordinances, as they have been termed, dissolved the French Parliament, limited voting rights in the country, and attempted to censor the press. Within days, widespread riots against his rule spread throughout France. This has become known as the July Revolution of 1830 and led to Marie's brief stint as Queen of France. Realising that his situation was hopeless, on the 2nd of August, Charles X abdicated in favour of his son, Marie's husband, Louis Antoine. Yet, Louis's prospects of quelling the discontent throughout France were no better than his father's, though it is believed that Marie urged him to assume the position of King of France. He hesitated at the idea, and 20 minutes after Charles X had abdicated, Louis Antoine in turn relinquished his rights to the throne in favour of his younger brother Henri, a nine-year-old who he hoped would become a consensus candidate to become the new monarch. The upshot of these developments on the 2nd of August 1830 was that for 20 minutes between Charles X's abdication and Louis Antoine's own renunciation of the crown, Louis theoretically ruled as King Louis XIX of France. During those same 20 minutes, Marie Therese, the daughter of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette, was also briefly the Queen of France. The eventual resolution of the succession crisis came a week later on the 9th of August, the French Chamber of Deputies, or Parliament, decided that the young Henri was an unacceptable candidate and instead offered the throne to Louis-Philippe, a member of the House of Bourbon, but one whose father, Louis-Philippe, Duke of Orléans, had supported the French Revolution. As such, Louis-Philippe had the benefit of being both a prince of royal blood, but one with good republican credentials. He accepted the throne on the 9th of August 1830 and would remain as Louis Philippe I for 18 years, in what would subsequently come to be called the July Monarchy, after the revolt in 1830 which brought him to power. Following her brief stint as Queen of France and the accession of Louis Philippe I, Marie Therese and her extended family, including her husband and the deposed Charles X, went into exile, fearing violence if they remained in France. On the 16th of August 1830, they departed from the port of Cherbourg for the United Kingdom, but they were received frostily in England itself, a country with a long history of conflict with the French monarchy. As a result, they quickly resettled further to the north in the Scottish capital of Edinburgh, where Marie and Louis had lived for some time after their marriage 30 years earlier. They would remain here for just over two years. Late in 1832, an invitation was extended to the exiled Bourbons by the Emperor Francis I of Austria to reside in the Central European Empire from which Marie's mother had originally hailed. Availing of this change in fortune, the former royal family took up residence at Prague Castle in Bohemia but in 1835, relocated again to Gorizia. This is in Slovenia today, but was then part of Austria. Shortly after arriving on the Mediterranean coast, Marie's uncle Charles contracted cholera and died on the 6th of November 1836. Her last years were spent in relative obscurity by comparison with the misadventures and turmoil of her earlier life in the 1790s and 1820s. Her husband passed away in 1844, following which she relocated yet again to the outskirts of Vienna. Marie would live long enough to see a fresh rebellion sweep through France. This was part of a wider set of European popular uprisings in 1848, calling for liberalisation of the continent's governments. In France, this manifested itself in the deposition of Louis-Philippe and the promulgation of the Second French Republic. It would prove short-lived, and in 1852, Louis-Napoleon Bonaparte, a nephew of the great general, 
who had conquered most of Europe 40 years earlier, proclaimed himself as head of the Second French Empire. However, Marie predeceased the ascension of Napoleon III as emperor in 1852 by several weeks. On the 19th of October 1851, she died of pneumonia at the age of 72. A regular exile from France throughout her life, it is perhaps fitting that she is buried in Gorizia with her uncle and husband. Her gravestone bears the inscription, Queen Dowager of France, in remembrance of the fact that the eldest child of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette briefly ruled as Queen of France herself for just 20 minutes in 1830. Thank you so much for watching this video on Marie Therese. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like and a comment down below. And if you're new, why not subscribe? If you have any suggestions, you can leave them in the comments. Or you can find links to my email and Instagram in the descriptions, which are other ways to send me suggestions. Anyway, that's all from me. So I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.